But Pryor recently told the San Francisco Chronicle, because of his conversion, he's earned $100,000 this year. And the money isn't the only problem with the story Lee tells about Pryor. We have searched all of the records in California. There are no marriage documents. There are no marriage certificates. Well, my understanding was that he got married. And maybe one of the reasons there are no marriage certificates is the fact that he has a wife mm. from whom he is not divorced. Mm. Pryor also has two children. He wasn't ordered to pay them child support because he had no money. But now that he makes thousands, his wife says he still sends them nothing. This is the man who is living a good Christian life now? Well, this is all brand new to me. New to Lee? Well, Lee's colleague, the man who performed the ceremony, told us he knew all along Pryor wasn't divorced and he didn't consider the service a real marriage. There's a pastor, I pronounce you and my And here is that pastor and Pryor with Lee two weeks after our interview. Lee's still parading Pryor as his prize accomplishment. I became born again. <laughs> <laughs> Amen! A big moment. Lee knows how to turn into big money. And with the aid of a courageous local pastor, Larry Lee is building the first spirit-filled church in Auschwitz since the end of World War II. Another big attention-getting campaign by Lee was this fundraiser last summer. An emotional appeal for the church Lee was building at the site of the Nazi horror. Well, in Auschwitz, we're going there to build a physical church as well as construct the pastor. For six weeks, Lee's phone lines lit up taking donations for the cause. If you would like to make a donation using your Visa or MasterCard, touch one. What Lee didn't know was that we had followed him undercover when he went to Poland. It turns out the church at Auschwitz isn't Larry Lee's church at all. No, no, Lee only spent about an hour at the church. Looked around, nothing else. The church treasury secretary told us it was started two years ago by the Polish Pentecostal community, with money raised entirely on their own. Until now, he did not leave a penny here. In the church that right now we're building in Auschwitz, Poland, you gave the clear impression on the air that you were going over to build this church. Mm -hmm. In fact, this church had been underway for two years mm -hmm. before you ever, your name even came up in it. That's right. Before he left Poland, Lee did give the church a one-time donation of $30,000. The head of the church told us Lee had said that was all he could give. So compared to the millions the Lee ministry takes in every year, a $30,000 gift is small change. Well, we also, Diane, when we talked about the fact that we were raising money for the Poland Crusade, we talked about the fact that we were bringing the pastors and their wives. And how much did that cost? I don't know to the, I don't know exactly. We do. It cost $12,000. So that's a total of $42,000 when you were taking in how much as part of this campaign? Yeah, I, I'm not clear. I'm not sure exactly the numbers. Because we have copies. So we told Lee we obtained some of his bank records, which show the amount he gave in Poland was much less than his ministry often so. takes in in a day. You can see on this document, Larry Lee's ministry took in more than a million dollars in one month. Day after day, you're taking in enormous amounts of money. You're taking in $111,000. That's one day. $17,000, $26,000, $45,000, $125,000. One day. Do you think the people who sent in money to this church knew that you were going to give this church a tiny fraction of what you make in one day? You know, Diane, we are, um, you mentioned the National Religious Broadcasters uh, earlier. We have uh, the Ethicon seal, which is their Ethics and Financial Integrity Commission, which so is... So did Jim and Tammy Baker. Well, the, the reality is that when we, <clears throat> when we applied for this, we submitted, um, we submitted all of how we raise finances, where the money goes, how it goes. We have an audit every year on everything that we do. Can we see it? Sure. But it's now been a month and a half since that interview, and the Lee Ministry has never given us the audit or figures on donations to Poland. Which leaves the question, were Lee's followers misled about the money they gave for a specific project? We have every reason to ask the IRS to look into it. 
They don't think we should. Again, Congressman Jake Pickle. What did it do with the other money? Where did it go and where is it? Some of it, of course, buys more airtime. Lee used airtime last summer to tell viewers about a calamity in his personal life, saying he'd lost everything he had because his Tulsa house had burned to the ground. We've had plenty to wear, praise yeah. God. It ain't much, but what we've got <laughs> is on us. He even offered to send followers a tape, lessons from his misfortune. How Larry Lee applied them to his own life after fire destroyed his family's home for a sacrificial investment of $30 or more. To the we lost our furniture, and we lost uh, our home, and we lost uh, most of our clothes. Everything you had? Yeah. Well, not quite everything. A Tulsa house burned all right, an insured house Lee had been trying to sell for two years without luck. Lee says he just moved his things into it before the fire. But Lee didn't lose this house, the 5.1-acre estate outside Dallas, where he's been living for the past six years. So viewers hear about his destitution. My little girl, she said, Daddy, you don't have to get me a car, uh, because we probably don't have enough money. You knew what you were doing. No, ma'am. You knew the impression you were creating. Do you think people knew that you were not destitute, homeless, wiped out? We moved with all of our furniture and everything we had last June. So what was Lee saying? That there was nothing left in that house in Dallas? We were told that you have a lot still there. No, there's nothing there. Nothing? Take a look at these photographs taken two days after our interview with Lee. The Dallas house filled with furniture, books, family photos. Lee's maid and the nanny were still working there. And not only that, we learned one month after the Tulsa house burned, Larry Lee's ministry bought him another house there, a third house, paid for in cash. Let me tell you something. God's people will always have enough money if, when they're hit by the devil, they sow the biggest seed they can. He may have faith in God. He ought to have faith in that the Internal Revenue Service doesn't find out about this and doesn't pursue him. Again, some notes. We have received a battery of letters from Lee's public relations spokesman saying we missed some of the money he spent in Poland. For instance, giving out his own books for free. But the spokesman said the reason he couldn't tell us how much Lee had collected for Poland was because all of the donations, no matter the project, go into one central fund. The fastest growing ministry in the business, Robert Tilton, when primetime continues after this. As many as 30 million Americans tune in each month to watch this kind of religious programming. I'm screaming back! The typical viewer lives in the South or Midwest, has only a high school education, and is usually a woman, often 55 or older. God gave me this truth. He didn't send me the rich, fat cat. No, he certainly didn't. Most followers make between fifteen dollars and $25,000 a year. But while they may be on a tight budget, they're extremely generous. And no one knows that better than televangelist Robert Tilton. When prime time continues. More money than the income, we figure, of Madonna and Michael Jackson combined. As we said before, it takes a lot of money to keep one of these TV ministries on the air. But we have been told that making money and marketing are what this man does best. People said his organization is a state-of-the-art factory for donations, all for the operations and bank accounts of the Robert Tilton Ministry. <laughs> and I'll tell you something else. Those that mess with me, they're messing with the apple of God's eye. This is Robert Tilton. He has the fastest-growing ministry on television today. Oh, you, you foul, rotten, sneaking devil. I'm going to beat you up, you devil. I'm going to cut you to pieces in the name of Jesus. Viewers are riveted by his melodrama, his quirky style. I love you. And he parlays all of it into a high-tech church in Dallas and more airtime than almost any other televangelist. I'll say yes, Lord. Tilton takes in so much money, he makes other TV ministers look like amateurs. And I want you to make a $1,000 vow of faith. Oh, I know you probably don't have $1,000. But ballot. Try to find out how much money Tilton makes, and you discover the ministry is shrouded in secrecy. The pastor has bodyguards. His offices are sealed off with armed security and surveillance cameras. 